In this video, we will be covering the anatomy of the squid. Now, the squid belongs to the kingdom Animalia, phylum Mollusca. The phylum Mollusca is a large group of invertebrate animals that vary in size and shape and appearance. The diversity of the animals in the phylum Mollusca is one of the features that makes this group so interesting. Now, the main unifying characteristics that all mollusks share it's going to be a soft body consisting of similar parts. The body plan will also have a mantle, a visceral mass, a head, and a muscular foot. The mantle is the sheath of skin that surrounds the open space called the mantle cavity. And the mantle cavity will house the respiratory organs and the visceral mass. Any excretory and reproductive and digestive products will be released from this mantle cavity. In the aquatic species, such as the squid, the water flows in and out of the mantle to oxygenate the body. In the squid, the mantle is used to propel the body in the water by using a jet propulsion system. The visceral mass will contain the, the various organs of the digestive, the excretory, and the reproductive system, as well as the nervous and the circulatory system. Now, the head can be very distinct, especially with the squid, and the muscular foot will be present in all mollusks. It's usually going to be used for some type of locomotion. In the squid, the foot is going to have a specialized uh, a specialization uh, into the siphon, and it's going to use this as part of that jet propulsion system. Additionally, we will see that mollusks undergo triploblastic development. And this is the type of development where we have an early embryo consisting of three layers of germ cells, the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. These cells will eventually specialize and differentiate into the various tissues of the body. The mollusk will also uh, have a structure called a protostome. This protostome um, is a means that during the embryonic development, the blastophore will, will form the mouth. They'll possess a salome, which is a hollow space in the body cavity. The uh, mollusk will also have organ system level of development, and so we'll see those organs suspended in the body cavity by mesentery. The mollusks all have bilateral symmetry, and remember that that is going to be where you can divide the body into two identical sections. Additionally, the mollusks have a complete digestive system, which consists of both a, uh, an opening, the mouth, and an exit way, the anus. They have an open circulatory system except for the cephalopods, including the squid, which have a closed circulatory system. This means that the squid will have uh, a heart and blood vessels for transport. Uh, the aquatic mollusks, such as the squid, will also use gills, and the gills are sometimes called the tenidia, and these will typically be uh, kind of a, a flattened structures, and they occur in pairs. In the squid, the shell will be reduced as an internal bone called the pen. And as we look at the squid, we will see that the squid, like other mollusks, are dioecious, meaning that the male and the female structures are located on separate individuals. The squid is classified uh, in the kingdom Animalia, phylum mollusca, class cephalopoda. The name cephalopod literally translates into head foot due to the general appearance of the body. The cephalopods are known to be some of the most intelligent and adaptable animals of the invertebrate grouping. Some experiments have even shown that these animals are capable of learning and of memory. The cephalopods can range in size from less than an inch to over 60 feet, which is uh, an example by the, uh, the deep sea giant squid. Squids occur in all areas of the ocean, from the shallow reefs to the deep plains, and they can tolerate the harsh cold waters of the Arctic and even the temperate regions around the equator. Now, the body shape of the cephalopods will consist of the prominent head located in this area, the tentacles or arms. Each tentacle has a series of suckers that help the cephalopod to hold the prey and to manipulate the objects in the environment. The cephalopod also has a streamlined body, and this is to allow the... Uh, the cephalopod to move through the water more efficiently. In the squid, for example, the body is further lengthened and streamlined by the presence of an internal shell called the pen, 
We'll look at that on a future slide. The locomotion is achieved through jet propulsion stream in which the siphon funnels the water to push the body in motion. The siphon is actually a specialized foot and it has the ability to move and contract as needed. So locomotion can occur forwards or backwards, but in general, the squid will move in a, a backwards motion. The fins are, uh, they act as stabilizers to orientate the body. The squid um, are some of the most effective swimmers that we'll see in the ocean. They can hover motionlessly or they can achieve a speed of over 18 miles per hour. In order to evade uh, other predators, the squid can also um, maneuver quickly. And then they have another defense uh, mechanism and that's the ability to secrete a cloud of ink. Now this will serve as a smoke screen. The ink contains a pigment called melaton, and this melaton is, is uh, basically a camouflage dispersion, and um, the chemical compound tends to be very uh, distasteful and disagreeable to fish that may want to feed on the mollusk. So the squids are some of the most effective predators. And squids feed on a variety of animals, including fish, crustacean, and other mollusks. If we take the tentacles and move them back, we will find the sharp beak. And this can inflict a really powerful uh, bite. And it has uh, two glands attached to it. One of the glands is a digestive gland that helps to liquefy the material that the, uh, the squid is feeding on. And the other one injects an amount of venom that will in incapacitate the prey. Um, it's also going to have a uh, radial, and that's located in this area, kind of like the beak area. It's, it's a scraping organ, and this scrapes away uh, at the animal that the, um, the squid is feeding on. So that the beak consists of the two jaws, and the uh, membrane that covers the beak is called the peristromal membrane. So the body of the squid is broken down into three major regions, the trunk, the head, and the appendages. The siphon is on the ventral surface and is used for uh, locomotion specifically to help with jet propulsion. The siphon is also sometimes called the funnel. On either side of the siphon we will see the, uh, the eyes. The eyes are very complex for the invertebrates. They have similar structures to what we would see in the human eye. So you would see the iris, the cornea, and a lens located within the eyes. The fins are located here. They help for maintaining the stability of the squid as it moves through the water. The squid has a streamlined body shape. If we separate out this area right here, this is where we would find the beak. Now as we look at this trunk area right here, uh, this trunk area consists of the large mantle and it's a unique structure that is um, characteristic of mollusks. If we were to look at the inside of the structure, the mantle cavity is what houses the gills and the visceral mass. Anterally, uh, what we're going to see on that anterior surface is uh, this beginning of that internal shell called the pen. And we could pull this structure out, it runs the length of the body, and we could see what that internal uh, structure of the, the pen looks like. So here we can see the close-up of the eyes, we can see the siphon, and we can see that extension of the pen located here. But one of the features of the cephalopod that's particularly unique is its ability to change colors and its ability to change appearance. And it does this by specialized cells uh, located on the skin called the chromatophores. And these cells can contract or expand, and though they and through this they can change the color by uh, the radial muscles. And so they can change shape and they can uh, add for uh, camouflage techniques. Additionally, uh, some of the deep sea cephalopods can display bioluminescence as well. So as we begin looking at the internal features of the uh, squid, we'll start off with Right here we have the stomach. Now this is described as a sac-like organ that's located just dorsal to that systemic um, heart. We can see the cecum. This is a large digestive gland and it's attached to that stomach. 
and this is where the majority of digestion occurs. We can continue and we can see the tenidium. Again, remember that the tenidium is a description of the uh, feather-like uh, gills that we see. And again, that feather-like appearance allows for more absorption uh, to obtain that oxygen from that surrounding um, wa water. Uh, we can see here is the nidimental gland. The nidimental gland coats eggs in the female with a gel that gives them a protective cohesion. Uh, we can see the location of the siphon, the eyes, the tentacle. We can see that mantle, and so here we would have that mantle cavity. Here is the, uh, the ink sac. Remember that this is a unique feature to the squid, and it releases the cloud of ink from the ink sac. Uh, the ink contains a pigment melaton, and this is what provides that cloud of camouflage. Uh, another view of just the internal structures. We can clearly see the pen as it runs down the length, or partially see it as it runs down the length of the squid. Now, when we look at the systemic versus the brachial heart, we have the systemic heart right here, and this is the true heart that pumps the blood throughout the, uh, the body. Remember that the squid has a closed circulatory system, so it will have a heart and blood vessels. The brachial heart, which are located here and right here, they're located on either side um, near the gills, could really be called gill hearts. And the purpose of these is to help pump as much of that oxygen that is obtained from the gills back to the heart and then throughout the remainder of the body. Remember that the squids are dioecious, meaning that we have both males and females. This is a diagram of the female squid. We can see the ovaries. This is the site of oogenesis and the development of the eggs. We can see the oviductal uh, gland located right here and the oviductal gland secretes a protective shell-like membrane around the eggs. We can see the nidimental gland and again this one coats the eggs with that gel that protects them and keeps it cohesive. Here we have the view of the internal structures of the male squid and we can see the gonads in this area right here uh, for the testes, we can see the uh, penis located here. The penis is what releases the spermatophore to the helicolized arm during mating of the female. Now let's talk about that helicolized arm for just a moment. On the male, the arms have a secondary function in reproduction. During the mating, the male will transfer a sperm packet called the spermatophore that is uh, produced by the testes to the female mantle using the left fourth arm in a maneuver known as a hectolocal. And um, this hectolocalized arm is specialized for this specific function. Now if we were to compare the difference between the male and the female's arms, you will notice that in the male, the males are shorter and thicker, while in the female, the arms will be much thick, uh, much thinner and longer.